Politicians are fond of telling us that Britain is essential to the well-being of all the people of these isles. Now if this is so, why do these same politicians promote separate administrations in three out of the four constituent parts of Britain? Why have they fragmented Britain if Britain is so important to them? The answer is that it isn't. Their only interest in Britain is the political opportunities it provides for them. Why is it that the only part of Britain that is deprived of representation is the one that provides the cash to keep the others going? Why is only one part of Britain dominated by politicians from another country who cannot bring themselves to use the word England? Why is only one part of Britain destined for fragmentation and obliteration? How on earth can any sane and fair-minded person say that we are a united kingdom? There's nothing united about it. Since 1997 we have been as tribal and disunited as any African country. The three countries of Wales, Ireland and Scotland are relatively democratised, while England is under a foreign-led dictatorship. Wales, Ireland and Scotland have the democratic choice of becoming sovereign nations, while England cannot even get recognition as a nation because of these people. England is subject to the will of foreign politicians, whilst the other countries exclusively elect their own nationals to conduct their own affairs without regard or consultation outside their own borders. England disproportionately funds the other countries with no say whatsoever on how the money is to be spent. The minor countries elect members of Parliament for England that have virtually no say in the lives of their own constituents but can dictate policy in England where they are totally unaccountable. England has no say whatsoever on who is elected to the devolved governments of Scotland, Ireland and Wales, yet Labour has depended on people from those countries to elect the government for England. Ireland, Wales and Scotland have representation in Europe, England does not. Three countries have organisations to promote tourism, sport, culture and a host of other elements that help make a nation viable, whilst England is being held in the grip of nationals from those countries who are hell-bent on depriving the English of those same institutions. Three countries are encouraged to have a national identity whilst England is not recognised at home or in Europe as anything other than balkanised regions. Here's an example of the blatant discrimination that is directed only at England. The proposed Local Transport Bill. Here are the clauses that specifically exclude Wales from the damaging effects of this vicious tax grab by the English-hating Labour leadership. These schemes can be imposed without consultation on England, that's a dictatorship. In Wales, a Welsh Minister must approve it. Democratic. Note the use of the word Welsh, not a Minister for Wales. This dictatorial clause deprives 50 million English people of any say whatsoever. The 3 million Welsh must be consulted. In Scotland transport is a devolved matter so none of the Act will apply. Now you can see how England is being wrecked whilst the other countries are insulated from these ruinous policies. 75% of British legislation applies only to England. This is how England is being isolated, dissolved and destroyed by a leadership that was elected in Scotland. Another prime example is how Prime Minister and his Chancellor rushed to Scotland at the time of the banking collapse to ensure that all job losses occurred in England rather than Scotland. How unbiased is that? The British government has opened our doors to unlimited third world immigration and is building three million houses in the rural areas of England to ensure that this immigration stays in England. How unifying is that? Tourism is extremely important. It's one of our biggest earners. However, funds allocated to the promotion of tourism is somewhat disproportional. Scotland gets £3.77. pence. Wales get an allocation of four pounds and three pence per person, and England gets twenty pence. Brown proudly declared last month that the English cancer sufferer will now be allowed to buy his own drugs, some costing tens of thousands of pounds, whilst our fellow Britons in Scotland get theirs free on the national health, courtesy of the English taxpayer. Some English patients have to sell their homes to pay for them. 
But that's not too important because if they need aged care in England they will have to sell their houses and empty their savings to pay for it anyway. The Scots get all of this free of charge so they can pass all their accumulated wealth to their sons, daughters and grandchildren. Their children get free university education that costs the average English student £25,000. They even extend this racist discrimination down to the level of our kids. Spending per pupil is 12% higher in Scotland. Scottish schools are allowed £1 per head for a school dinner. English children are allocated 37 pence. Divided in unity, you may say. How come this unity means free nursing homes and free home care for the aged in Scotland, free television licences, free heating, free travel, free insulation, free prescriptions, no tolls, free hospital parking, to name but a few? Is it in unity that Brown gives gypsies carte blanche to set up encampments among the beautiful villages of England whilst the locals in Scotland and Wales are allowed to reject them to preserve their rural areas? Why must English local authorities fly the Union flag whilst the peripheral countries are allowed to fly their national flag? How democratic is that? Why has one country got access to both a Scottish lottery fund and a British lottery fund, whilst the others have to make do with sharing just the British one. How equal is that one, Mr Brown? Why does our national broadcasting company have BBC Scotland, BBC Northern Ireland, BBC Wales, and no mention whatsoever on any circumstances of England? Why does it have a Scottish history site, a Welsh history site, a Northern Irish history site, but no English history site? Why has Sport England been changed to the UK Sporting Association available to all of the countries of Britain, whilst the separate Sports Scotland and Sports Wales have been retained for the purposes of Wales and Scotland only? Why is there a Scottish Labour Party and a Scottish Conservative Party, Scottish Liberal Democrats, but no English equivalent? If we were all British and were to remain so, what was the reason in 1974 for taking 500 square miles of England with a population of 400,000, changing its name from Monmouthshire to Clwyd and giving it to Wales? And what was the point of Blair redrawing North Sea borders in 1999 to give 30% of England's North Sea assets to Scotland? To me, it stinks of pre-planning for independence. Oh, I forgot to mention that in this united fair land of ours, England sends about £50 billion in cash to Scotland, Wales and Ireland to ensure that they are just that bit more equal among the brotherhood of the Browns, nations and regions. Now I ask the question, why the hell are we English still identifying with Britain and what is in the Union for us? The time is now here to step back from this grossly abused union and regroup. We need three independent countries that can discuss a way forward to the equal and mutual benefit of all of our peoples. Otherwise, we all disappear into the quagmire of defeat and into the hands of an all-consuming German-led Europe. And if Scotland wants to go it alone, then so be it. If we English had the desire to get organised, we could rip this despotic cabal at Westminster to shreds and sling nasty little racists like Brown, Darling, Alexander, Reed, etc. back over the border with a coat of tar and feathers to insulate them from the dismal, miserable climate of their homeland.